What's up guys, Matty here at MixTheMasterMySong.com. Today we're going to talk about mixing templates, in particular my mixing template. So a mixing template is, is something you have set up already before you start mixing. And the reason I do it is to stay creative. So I have a bunch of reverbs, a bunch of delays, some other you know interesting effects that might, might work for a certain uh, situation. And then I have all my buses set up and then my stereo bus set up before I even drag the files in. And so what this does is it makes it a lot easier for me to be creative and not have to think so much on the technical side. You know, I think a lot of us get bogged down with all the plugins and if it's really working right and all the technical stuff that we lose sight of what we're doing, which is trying to make a song sound better and keep the emotions of the song working. So for me, if I have a reverb ready to go, I don't have to set it up and think about, well, am I gonna use a plate or da da da? I can just be like, I need a plate, I need a hall, and I can turn it on right away. Today I'll show you how my mixing template is set up and maybe you can take it and use it for some of your songs. Uh, before we do get started, please like and subscribe and so you can make sure to get all my videos as soon as they come out. Let's go. All right, guys, so what we're going to do is just start from left to right and work our way through my template. Um, so I color code everything. If you've seen any of my videos, you know I color code all my instruments and, and music and drums and vocals, too. Um, but the first bank is is um, my reverbs. And so these are all colored like a brownish orange color. Um, and so I have a bunch of different reverbs set up. So I have different flavors of reverbs and different kinds of reverbs because each you know unit has its own strengths and, and maybe even weaknesses but um i start off with a, a room from the valhalla room which i love all the valhalla stuff uh, then i got the emt 250 which is by uad this is in a beautiful plate um, i use this a lot of times on female vocals sometimes male vocals more pop stuff if i just want a plate that doesn't like get in the way of the mix i guess this this thing's really great it's also really great on guitars too uh, this r4 is by uh, exponential audio which is now i think oh, isotope but this thing is amazing one of the things i love about it is that you can change your uh, pre-delay to a note value so you can do a 32nd or or 16th and i do that a lot with uh, vocals um, to get the reverb out of the way of the vocal but still have that reverb sound and then if you want to get rid of early reflections, you can turn them down. So this thing is really great in being able to switch thing. And they have like chorus and gate and rat. I mean, all kinds of stuff. You can really dive deep with this reverb, which, which sometimes is actually its weakness because you can spend too much time tweaking it. And, and like I said earlier, I don't like to get too lined up, uh, stuck in technical world. This next one is where I use on halls a lot. It's Seventh Heaven uh, by Liquid Sonics. It's like... Uh, it's all impulses of the procrastity reverb, which is a hardware, hardware unit uh, that's pretty well known and sounds amazing. I like the halls on here a lot. Um, I use the plates on here as well sometimes. Uh, it, it doesn't, it, it's, a, it's just a really amazing reverb. I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's different than like a lexicon though, which has its own sound too. Um, this is the AMS, uh, what they call it, RMX 16. Uh, which is old school reverb. I use this for ambient sounds a lot, and sometimes I'll use it for plates, but it's really good for ambience, um, which is good sometimes for vocals, sometimes for drums. Uh, one of my favorites, the Valhalla Vintage Verb. Um, this is great for vocals and, and anything else, and, and you have all kinds of stuff. Uh, this is great when you're just trying to find something quick. I can, all these presets are great. You can just pick one and then and then just start going through them really quick. So. You know, where the R4 reverb is, if I'm looking for something in particular, this one is more if I'm not quite sure what I'm looking for, but I'm just going to try to find something that sounds good for whatever source it is. Uh, the next one is the Verb Suite, which I, I have here. I, I don't use it that much, but um, sometimes I like, they have the 30,000, which is the old Eventide unit. Um, and I think in the halls, they have a canyon setting that I like to use. Is it in here? Oh, I could have to find it. But they have this really great canyon setting, um, which is great for like a delayed reverb sound. Um, and then there's there's also, you know, a bunch of, you know, if I'm looking for like a 480 sound, 
uh, by lexicon, I have that as well, which I'll use. Oh, now I'm getting backwards. The, the plate, I think. I use a lexicon plate sometimes in here. Um, so this is another great one. Honestly, you know, I have all these set up because I'm a plug-in junkie, but I could, I could do a lot of this just without. Um, this is the Manny Reverb. Uh, this thing's awesome too, and it's actually also emulated uh, the, uh, another emulation of the Brocacity from what I've read. Um, I like this one because I can find a sound quick. And so if it's kind of like you know the Valhalla. If, if I'm looking for something and I'm not sure what, I can switch these really quick and find something, and the reverb sounds great. Other good thing is I'll use this on vocals a lot. It has compression built in, so if you want the, the reverb to really come forward, you can do that with this uh, and the pre-delay is quick. So another one I use quite a bit. Um, and then this is an effects reverb. Um, I have it set on this millennial verb and it's, it's actually a cool setting and I'll use it at the end of a, a phrase, maybe that's transitioning to a chorus. And so the, the word will trail out for a long time. So that's really the only time I use this is just for a certain um, effect that I'm looking for. Uh, the next are my kind of spreaders and choruses. So I have my Roland Dimension D, which I'll use on you know keyboards or, or vocals. Um, I usually use the all buttons in setting. Uh, then the newcomer, uh, the Valhalla Delay. Um, I used to just have the Roland and the Micro Shift, but since getting this plug in, I'm actually just been really trying to spend some time with it and seeing what it can do. So I have it set up as a doubler too. And what do I have? I've been using this setting here, um, but switching around and, and just kind of really just, I have that set up to learn the plug in more. Uh, once I find a plug and I really like, I'll put it in my template in a couple different places so I can spend some time with it as I'm mixing. Uh, and then, so the green turns into all my delays, which are quite a few. Uh, the first one's a slap, which is the Echo Boy. Um, I've been using this setting for a long time. And, you know, it's just I've used the Echo Boy for so long, I still use that um, as my slap setting. And then as you can see, um, I have eighth note, quarter note, and half note. And these all have been switched out to the Valhalla as well. Um, sometimes I'll use the Echo Boy here. Sometimes I'll use the a Slate or a D16 repeater. Uh, really depends. But right now I have this as um, the, the kind of standard delay. And, and much like I was talking about in the doubler, I'm still trying to figure out the strengths and weaknesses and spend some time with this plugin to really get to know it. There's a lot to, to um, take in with this plugin with all the different options. And actually I can put a link to my review of this plugin. You can check it out. I'm really digging this one. Uh, next is the EP34 by the UAD. This has a really cool sound. It's good for like dub sound. If you're looking for that reggae dub sound, it's got a really unique echo that I can't find in many other plugins. And um, I just love it. And when I need it, it's there. And that goes for a lot of these kind of delays coming up. I don't use any of these on every mix, but I know the sound and when I want it, I have it set up so I don't have to, you know, run around and think. This is uh, the Korg uh, delay. I don't use it on much, but once in a while it, it's, the, it's the right delay for the right sound. So I have it set up ready to go. Um, this is a ping pong delay, just a standard ping pong. And once again, we're using the Valhalla on that now. Um, telephone delay, I still use the Echo Boy for that because they have the telephone style here. And I just have it set up on a quarter note, ready to go when I need that telephone sound. This is a futz delay um, that I actually stole from Josh Goodwin. Uh, it's a cool little thing. And um, so it's got like a distortion and then a delay and then, uh, then the reverb. Um, I think I, I kind of changed the mind up from what he uses, but that's what's cool about stealing things. You can make them your own. Um, but this is a cool, cool reverb sound. Doesn't nearly work on everything, but when it does, it's really awesome. It's, got, it's, it's cool. You got to try it out. Check out the settings and try it out. Um, this is uh, called Relayer, and I have a bunch of presets I made myself here. Um, and this thing is really, really cool, but you got to dial it in. So... Um, that's why I took time and I made a bunch of presets that I liked. And so, for instance, I have this filter down where it's, it's a bunch of delays and then it has this effect of just an EQ basically filtering down. 
but then I also have like filter down delay, uh, my wah delay with this wah effect that goes when it delays, really, really cool. Um, panning filter down, so same thing as the filter down, but panning left, like a little bit left and then a little bit right. This delay is really cool and you can spend your whole day working on this thing. Um, they also have a bunch of presets that are really great too. Uh, but this is more of a um, certain sound that I'm looking for and I know it's there. I have my presets ready to go um, and, and it's not something I use every day like you know the quarter note or the eighth note or something like that. Uh, this is the Manny delay, another amazing reverb delay effect. Um, I have it set with the reverb and the doubler on. This will be um, for delay throws and if I want it to be a little more washy than just a quarter note delay throw or something. Uh, and let's see what we got here. Delay Verb, uh, Echo Boy Junior, just to switch it up. I got it, might as well use it. And then Reverb. So it's just a delayed reverb, uh, a, a reverb with delay on it. And this is this Mobius I've been messing around with. I don't, I don't really, haven't really gotten the gist of it yet. Um, and then last is the filter delay, which takes up some CPU. And because I don't use it all the time, I usually just have it turned off by default. What it is, is, if it opens, okay, it's the Sound Toys, it's a little uh, thing I built out of the Sound Toys effects box. It's a Echo Boy into a Micro Shift into a, a Freak filter. So the, the filter kind of swims down as the delay is going and then it also gets some chorus effect on it. Pretty cool effect. Uh, and then I think I have, I have a gate on there only because it gets kind of loud. Uh, so. We'll just leave that on for now. And then this is something new I've added that I haven't been really using yet because I forget I even have it. <laughs> but it's uh, I just have a distortion, a Manny distortion um, just set up so I can throw vocals at it or maybe drums or whatever, depending. Uh, keyboards, who knows. Um, okay, so that ends my long run of effects. Now this is my bus section. So let me explain this. All my music go to separate uh, buses, and here's where they are, the, the different sounds that will go there. You can notice it says SSL here at the bottom. So all, all these buses go to my SSL summing, um, which you can watch some of my videos on that. And then that goes to my mastering chain and all that. So this is where all my in-the-box mixing goes out to my out-of-the-box mixing, if that makes sense. Um, so what I have is, is, is this drums aux, and so all my kick and snares come here. They also get sent to these three auxes, which I have a parallel compression here. And then I have um, this drums distortion, which is just a little bit of a devil lock. And then this is drums transient. So sometimes I find towards the end of a mix, that the kick and snare have kind of gotten buried with all the vocals and everything else. So if I need to push the kick and snare a little bit, I have this transient booster that I can turn up. So this is all, all three of these are parallel processes. So you'll always have your regular drums, but you also have parallel processes going as well. So this, I turn this up and it'll push the kick and snare out a little bit of the mix, the transients of it, and really helps makes the mix cut through. Uh, this is high percussion, so hi-hat, cymbals, maybe even bongos. Uh, depending on the mix, they'll go to different, and, and then sometimes all the drums go here. It depends, like rock stuff or live drums, I'm usually sending them all to the same bus. Hip-hop stuff, usually separating them to get a bit more separation. So this can all depend, and this all changes, um, just like everything in a mix. Uh, this is where the bass goes, music one, music two. Sometimes they just go, everything goes to music one. If it's a big session, I might split up like so strings and then, you know, piano instruments or guitars and strings, whatever it is. I'll split them up just to get more separation with the busing. Uh, this is where all my vocals go. And then you'll see I got this another send here going to Vox Parallel Compression, which goes to this track. If I want to parallel compress all my vocals, I can do that. And I got the CLA and the uh, L1 limiter set up for that. This is effects. Um, this is all, we're all, you see all my reverbs, they all return to this. So all my effects are going here. And this SSL stuff is just actually my uh, summing unit, which is digitally controlled, which is amazing. Uh, and like I said, I'll put a link to the summing video if you're interested in that. 
And then lastly, I got uh, a BGV track and extra track. And honestly, these are both actually extra tracks. So if I'm doing something different in the mix or, or I got a really big mix that I want to spread out more, or I do want to send my BGs to its own summing track, I have two more summing tracks um, available if, if I need them. And I don't always use them, but I sometimes do, sometimes don't. And then after it goes through all my analog gear, it comes back here and goes to the master track, which is basically just my better maker EQ, which is analog. So this is the settings for it. And then the better maker limiter, which is there. Um, so it goes out of the SSL into my SSL bus compressor over to here into my backs into my EQ, into the limiter, and then back into my converter, back into here. Um, hopefully you guys follow that. And then so, so th these aren't necessarily in line with the order it goes. It goes in the order I just told you. And then lastly, uh, a Fab Filter Pro L. If I need a little extra level or, um, or yeah, that, or just to maybe turn it down or whatever, uh, just so I don't, you know, go over in the reds. And this can all change sometimes too. Sometimes I'll use the ozone in here. The ozone eight's great. Um, I got a standard clip if if because I only want to clip just a touch with this because otherwise it gets a little weird sounding. So if I need to get a little louder, I might use a standard clip. Um, and then these are my post plugins, which are my metering. Uh, I'll drag this over here. Um, my metering, which is the Brainworks and the the Clarity, which is right here. And then this snapshot program, which I'll drag this over so you can see it. Um, this is a program called Session Recall, and it's a really great program because you can you can draw in your um, your settings for analog equipment. So this is actually how my mixes all start with my analog equipment, and then if I change it, I can just go to Session Recall, change it, and use this plugin called Snapshot, which is basically just a way to take pictures of anything and store them in a session so that it's easier to recall. So that is my mixing template. Uh, hopefully it was interesting to you. Maybe you can take some of the settings or some of the ideas and use it in your mixes. If you do need your song mixed, please hit me up at mixamastermysong.com. And if you're interested in taking a more detailed course that I have, you can check out the course there as well. Talk to you soon.